Bang! Needs Knives, I'm Jared, and today we're checking out a knife from a new company. This company started in 2021. I'm really excited to check this out because, you know, uh, since the first time I laid eyes on them, I've been wanting to check one out, so really awesome to get one. Now, this company is out of Arizona, started in 2021, and they typically were making ballast songs, but this is one of their, or this is their first folding pocket knife, at least to my knowledge. I love how they have the card right there. You can see all the details, and it, which is a nice little touch. And then look at this. They even tell you the angle of which it was sharpened. So this is the Machine Wise Sonora. You can see with the ballast songs, the way they're sharpened. The ballast songs do look really badass too for any uh, you know guys out there that do like the ballast songs. Uh, now here, look at this packaging. What? Man, this packaging is really cool. Um, it is, it, well, one, it looks like a hockey puck, uh, but it is, you know, hard plastic. You can tell it's probably 3D uh, printed, and it has the pivot, or sorry, not the pivot. They're calling it the bolster. This was your bolster. So you can see it right there. That's what that used to be, which is really cool. You got some oil and a T15 for the little hardware that this knife has. And why do I say that? Well, because this is an integral. And... I gotta say, I haven't had a USA made Integral on the channel in a while, at least not that I can think of. The last ones I can think of were um, uh, Marfion Customs, which was a long time ago, and this is some of the best machining I've seen in a while out of the USA. Incredible, incredible work. So we have a Titanium Integral with a titanium clip, and I love the anodized, distressed look. That's what the card even says. It has this stone-washed finish over the anodization. Let's pop this sucker out. So it is a button lock, and look at that edge. You can see it is a, you never see edges like this, uh, typically from the factory. This is a mirror polished edge. And we'll, we'll talk about why you see the taper and everything, because I think, you know, it is pretty interesting. I, got the, I get that question a lot. Stone washed blade, 20 CV, 61 HRC, titanium integral, and it is a button lock. And look at the machining of that pivot. You know, like I said, it did come from this, but my goodness, look at, the the fit it is fit in there like so perfectly it almost looks like it was just machined you know together beautifully done now the edge why does it taper from such a thin edge right here all over to a super thick edge at the tip well you think a lot of people would think that well it's a different angle but it's not this is actually the same angle 20 degrees all the way across the difference is is the thickness this would be the thinnest part of the edge and as it tapers it is getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker all the way up to the spine thickness as you can see which is nice and thick this is a very tough tip you're not gonna have to worry about breaking you see the angle is just perfect um really really well done and Beautiful looking edge too. The mirror polish definitely adds a nice little touch that I always appreciate. I like me a good mirror polish edge. I like all different edges. Um, one thing I always prefer is the ability to do any kind of edge I want. Any steel will take a polished edge, but the question is, is will they hold it and will they have bite? Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Let's talk about the action. Button lock action. Now I seen a thing, I think it was on their Instagram, where they said that they tuned, I think this batch or whatever, uh, better than the last time. So I think that, you know, just like all companies, um, you know, especially with button locks, you know, a lot of them improve the button lock over time. And they're saying that they really, really went to work on this. And you can tell the break from this is near perfection. It is such a comfortable flipper tab that because it's so comfortable, it probably feels lighter than it, than it is. Uh, but you know, be, but man, you can launch out. You can get a lot of force into that uh, flipper tab. No fatigue. It's a very comfortable flip. A very comfortable break. Clean breaking. Uh, what acts as the detent because it's a button lock. But yeah, great, great um, action in the opening. And then with the closing, you have the button, but it is. 
you know, it's kind of hidden underneath the, the, what they call the bolster or the pivot collar. So you're not going to hit it. Like if I pinch grip it or something, you're not hitting the button unless you intentionally want to. The drop, it's so glassy smooth. Like it almost feels like it's just riding on air which I love, love, love. It's like oiled glass. I mean, it's just so, so damn smooth. I'm guessing it's ceramic caged bearings. I do not know if it's double row or not, but guessing it's brass cage, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'll get a picture of it or something, or you know, maybe take the, the pivot out and show you guys. The lockup, rock style lockup, no up and down at all. Love to see that. Um, I, I did lightly spine whack it, but I'm not gonna, you know, I don't wanna go crazy because I wanna let it break in. I don't like to do that with button locks right off the bat, especially with something so expensive. I, I wanna allow it to break in, maybe through a little bit of cutting and a lot of flipping, and then, you know, then maybe do something like that. It just doesn't make sense. Button locks, you know, when they're brand new and they haven't broken in, they, they can tend to slip sometimes. And I've seen so many of them, you know, get, more solid lock up the, you know, after you start cutting with them and stuff. So, you know, I just don't want to put it, you know, cause if it did fail, it wouldn't mean anything at that point, you know, it just mean it has to break in. So I might as well just let it do it anyways. Uh, but, but anyways, um, it's solid, it's rock solid. So, you know, but button locks like this, conventional button locks like this, they're not always the strongest locks. Some companies do them stronger than others. It's just lock geometry. Some do it really well and some don't. So it just depends on the company. Um, so hopefully this company is doing a really good job with it. It seems that they are. Um, but yeah, the action's great. I, I wouldn't mind if it was even a little bit stronger, but it doesn't need to be. And I don't know anybody that probably agree with me because it's such a clean breaking action. Um, I could fail it if I wanted to, I'm sure. Come on. Damn. Okay, we'll get it. All right. Yeah, I can fail it, you know, but I could fail just about anything. So, like I said, such a clean breaking uh, action. Uh, nice thin grind back here, so it's going to slice really good, and then the tip is going to have some good reinforcement, so you're not going to have to worry about the tip breaking. The handle's very slim, very, very slim, and the clip is a titanium pot clip that goes that you can flip over to this side, which is cool because button locks are ambidextrous. You can use them right or left hand. Uh, I like these types of clips. I actually just designed a clip very similar to this um, on one of my knives because one, you can flip it, but two, I like the way that when it comes around like this, the bend right there, the spring you get, it's uh, it allows it to not be so brutally tight from a milled titanium clip. This one works really well. It has a diamond textured pattern on the titanium. And like I said, I love the distressed look on the Anno and the two-tone finish. I like the, the, the contrast between this raw, ver this raw cut and the raw clip. Now, as far as ergonomics go, like I said, it is slim. It's very slim in the hand, but it's also very comfortable. And you have a spot right here that you can do the trigger pull on over the flipper tab. You know, if you want to get a little bit more control, but I got a full four finger grip. I feel the clip a bit, but it's fine. Um, no worries. This isn't going to be a work knife for most people. So, you know, it's not like you're going to be bearing down on this all day, uh, you know, Typically, yeah, maybe somebody will be, but, uh, and I'm sure it'll be just fine if so. The, the edge, let's talk about the edge and the steel and stuff, and then we'll talk about the nitpicks and negatives I have. So, the steel, the steel is 20 CV, 61 HRC, which I'm happy to see. Typically, with production 20 CV, it's typically 58 to 61, that's typically where we see it. They're saying this one's 61. Not sure if they check every single one, but that's supposedly what they're heat treating it at, which is fine. I think 20 CV, the best is going to be between 61 and 62. Uh, we like to see it in the high 61 to mid 62, which I think in that case, 20 CV takes the best edges. Um, we typically almost rarely ever see it over 62. So I, I don't want to hold other companies, you know, to, to that extent, even though that'd be really awesome. But 
at 61 to 62, typically with 20 CV, if it's got a good heat treatment, it tends to take a really, really, really good edge, even with a mirror polish that holds a lot of bite. So, that, and that's something I talk about often on the channel where, you know, 20 CV and M390 204P, the, the edge you're going you're gonna to want to put on it is going to be determined by the heat treatment in HRC. If it's a higher HRC, then you typically can go with a, if you want a finer edge, you can do it. But if it winds up being a lower HRC, typically you're going to want to do it more of a medium grit. Um, so, but you know, like I said, there, there's some, there's some nuances there. So it depends on, you know, like I said, the heat treatment and the HRC and geometry and so on. Um, you know, what angle you're sharpening at, but like I said, 20 CV takes a hell of a sharp edge and holds it really well when it's done well. And this being not mass produced is definitely going to, well, what hopefully is going to be on the, on the higher tier as far as quality goes with the heat treatment. At least I hope. Um, like I said, these are made in Arizona. Um, and USA tends to do a little bit better job when they want to with the heat treatments. Now, let's talk about the um the the negatives talk about the negatives i don't really have much i'll be honest and this is one of the best machine knives i've tried in a while from the usa it's made in the usa machined in the usa uh you know like i said it's been a while since i've had a usa made integral i'm very happy to see it um especially a titanium integral now the um the only negative i have and it's not even that bad uh, it's not even that big of a deal but the choil, I wish the this same exact choil, just like this is done, is just bigger. So this exact same thing, just a bigger size, which would push out the end of the plunge grind, not the beginning, but the end where the plunge grind ends. It would separate that from the edge. The edge would probably be right here. So it'd be farther away from the plunge grind. Now this is plenty of room. You can see the, the edge bevel cuts off really nicely. It doesn't get thicker right there. It's not hitting the plunge grind, but it would give me a little bit of separation when I am sharpening. If I want to lower back my edge angle, maybe I want to do a 15 degree edge bevel, right? So it would let me, it would allow me to do that without fear of hitting the plunge grind on the second sharpening or something. So that's just a preference. I like it opened up as big as possible. Not saying a finger choil, but just an actual sharpening choil so that you have one, room to sharpen, but two, room to lower your edge angle to whatever you want. This one's good, so I don't want to make it sound like it's bad. I would just love to see it just a little bit bigger. Um, same shape, same everything, just a little bit bigger. Now, some that, that's really the only negatives, negative I have, and it's not even a negative, to be honest. The, only, the one other thing I can say is, and this is a preference, has nothing to do with anything wrong. This is a drop point blade, beautiful drop point blade. I love even more than a, a regular drop point blade like this is a low tip drop point blade, which I think a lot of people agree with me to, to line the tip up with the center of the pivot straight across one that allows you to get better utility cuts and you don't have to lift your elbow up so high to get to the tip. This, you know, it's still a drop point, so you don't have to raise it up that high. You still have a lot of leverage into the tip, so it's fine, but you'd have even more leverage if the tip was a little bit lower. Now, it being as high as it is, that, that actually allows it to have that stability that you see from the spine thickness. But even a low tip one, you know, there's things that you can do to, to, to keep that toughness in the tip if that's what you're looking for. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, it's just a blade shape preference when it comes to drop points. Um, this thing's going to work just fine though. No problem slicing, great geometry. The belly has a little bit of stoutness. So you're going to be able to cut down on flat surfaces. And, you know, the tip is easy to get to. Um, all in all, beautiful knife. Love the size of the stop pin. Love that it's a T15 hardware on the, the clip and on the, the pivot. The action is amazing. Like I said, this thing, you can tell this was finely tuned because it's just, it, the action is so perfect that it, it has to be, <laughs> it has to be. Um, love the anodization and the colors on the inside. I actually have something over here that would match this thing pretty well. Check this out. My little, uh, this is made in the USA too, by Keybar. So this is by Keybar, which you can see it kind of has a little bit of the same color pattern slightly, you know, I, I think, I think they both look good together. Oh yeah. And one other thing I want to talk about really quick is, um, I seen on, or sorry, 
when I spoke to, I think it's the owner, I'm not positive it was the owner, but the guy I talked to on Instagram was saying that one, that they, they, they like constructive criticism. They're always wanting to improve their product. And I love to hear that. A lot of companies don't say that. And that to me is a great thing to hear because, especially as from a knife reviewer, because when we do criticisms in many cases, we get a lot of kickback, not always, but, but a lot of times. Now, a company that's willing to adjust and tweak things to the, you know, the buyers or audiences preferences or, or things that they like or would love to see or whatever is awesome. That is great. That is amazing. Um, it shows you that, you know, they are trying to build the best product possible for you. Um, we see a lot of makers are kind of stuck in their ways and they don't want to hear anything, especially from a younger audience when they've been doing it for so many years. And I understand the pushback there, but you got to, you got to know that the, the next generation is evolving just like you evolved your last generation, right? We're always involving and improving to the future. The, the new generation gets the information that the old generation knows and gets to, to test new theories and push things to the limit and try new things. And so I think it's always great to listen to the new crowd um, or new audience or whatever and not get stubborn and think you know everything. And I'm not saying that, because I mean, some of them, they damn near do, but that doesn't mean you can't evolve to be better or, or that there isn't things that evolve and get better or the knowledge on certain details and certain things. We just have more of it, you know? Anyways, I mean, we've seen a lot of myths <laughs> busted in the knife community. All in all, man, I like this knife quite a bit, like a lot, like a lot. This thing is really dope. Um, it is not cheap, but I don't expect it to be. Being USA made, machined to this quality, integral, um, super steel, hopefully with a, a great heat treatment. You know, we'll see, we'll find out, you know, we'll be testing it. But uh, yeah, I'm not mad at the price. I'm actually happy to see it and happy to see something so amazing on the channel. Um, is it going to be for everybody? Of course not. It's going to be out of a lot of people's price ranges, but that doesn't mean you can't appreciate that there is a company here making such high quality knives because USA made like, you know, I, I think the USA does the best work. There's a, some companies that don't, but there's a lot of companies that do. And we are the ones that typically, at least in history, we're always the ones that push the limits and evolve and the, you know, everybody else kind of follows suit and starts copying and stuff like that, which I, I think that's an awesome position to be in. And I'd love to see us continue to do that. So there you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Till next time. Peace.